morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today at Safety Chain's What is Food Safety Chain Management webinar. And we're going to be speaking today on how you can enforce food safety and quality compliance at every point along your supply chain. Our agenda today is very simple. We're going to discuss what is food safety chain management. We're going to go through um, an overview. We're going to look at how it works, and then we're going to discuss the return on investment. We're going to look at why cloud solutions are key to food safety and quality management in today's global uh, food supply chain. And then we're going to give you a little bit of information about our safety chain management solution, Safety Chain for Food, and then we will be taking your questions uh, at that point. My name is Barbara Levin, I'm Safety Chain's Vice President of Marketing and Customer Community. I'll be your host as well as one of your presenters today. And my name is Dave Detweiler, and he's the head of our customer solutions. And he'll be joining me uh, as well for parts of the presentation and for the Q&A session. Now, we're being hosted today for this event by WebEx. If you have any trouble at all during the event, you can send a chat to your host, um, or you can call WebEx support line directly. That number is on the information page if you have a full screen. Um, in terms of questions, you can do one of two things. You can go to the toolbar at the top of your page and click on the arrow on the right-hand side and see a question and answer box pop up. You can enter your question there and hit send, and that way it will be queued up for us. Or we'll be going out of full screen at the finish of the presentation, and you can enter your questions at that time. And with that, we're going to move on uh, now to our presentation on what is food safety chain management. <laughs> and we'll start with that question is, why is safety chain management becoming so popular in the food and beverage industry? And it's very simple. If we look at the big picture, uh, withdrawals, customer rejections, and recalls are costing the F&B industry $7 billion annually. These costs involve removing goods from shelves, placing those goods in the inventory uh, when, when recalls are severe, the lawsuits that can be involved with them, law sales, public relations repair, inventory replacement, and those are the direct costs. There's a lot of indirect costs that uh, have to do with all the reporting that needs to be done when you do have a recall and uh, the time and expense it takes to do that. And uh, the liability these days when there is a problem is being spread up and down the entire food supply chain. Grocery suppliers, producers, distributors, retail and services companies, basically anybody who touches the product at any point in the, in, the state, in the chain is really held liable. So this is becoming a big problem, especially as we said, in this very complex global food supply chain. Now, the food safety and quality assurance complexities are growing. I've spoken to very few companies whose FS2A departments are growing. And so everybody in this industry that we speak to is really being challenged with that that having to do more with less. So to the daily challenge of how do I meet my regulatory, my non-regulatory, and my customer requirements while getting product out on time, while remaining competitive, and of course while remaining profitable. Many companies are finding today that they can meet those challenges with the emerging technology of food safety chain management. This is a new generation of online technologies to help enforce compliance in real time along every point in your food supply chain. The benefits here are the ability to enforce safety and quality compliance as issues occur regulatory, non-regulatory, and customer compliance, both safety and quality. It eliminate the many, many manual processes and errors which uh, really uh, are holding back a lot of FSQA initiatives. It helps prevent withdrawals, rejections, and recalls. And what this does is protect your market value, profitability, 
and your brand. Today, even though there are systems in place in most organizations for certain parts of getting product out the door, most of the processes, especially when it comes to the safety and quality, are very manual and very time consuming. And wherever you are, up and down that food supply chain, you face some of these challenges. You know, the complexities of managing all the specifications for your suppliers and customers, tracking and verifying and reconciling COAs. How early can you detect problems when all of the information is being entered manually? How much time is spent collecting and analyzing data versus entering data? How much time do you spend verifying quality and safety that results perhaps in late shipments? How much time are you spending preparing for audits? And as everybody knows, as the saying goes, time equals money. The one way that can reduce many, many of those manual processes and have you be how do you be able to take a more proactive approach to food safety and quality? Again, it's through food safety chain management. Alliance, there are really four key steps, and this is putting this, you know, for the purpose of a 35-minute event, putting this fairly simply. The first step is to automate. Food chain management allows all of the tests that are sent by compliers, by suppliers, by third-party labs, all of the tests that you do internally, uh, standard operating procedure reminders and reviews. It ensures that all of the right procedures and tests are being performed inbound, internally, and outbound. As new specifications come in, either uh, as of a regulatory requ uh, requirement or a customer that has a new spec, they're automatically cascaded in these solutions so that something will not get past it if it doesn't comply with new specifications. Once all of the information is in the solution, and this is unlimited, you know, we, you know, many of you have hundreds of suppliers, hundreds of products, hundreds of customers. There can be thousands and thousands of different sets of specifications, but safe chain management will read all of that. It counts and analyzes the data in real time. You'll hear about Dave and I use the word real time a lot. And it compares the test results with the, with the specifications. Everything is passed, then it goes automatically to the next point you're seeing. For instance, it automates a COA. But if there is a problem, the right people are automatically notified via text, via email, uh, many, many different ways. So getting those alerts in real time so they can take immediate corrective action. And excuse me. And this makes it much easier for all of the participants in your supply chain to work together. And it's important, there's an up-to-date, centralized, very visible for safety and quality performance reporting and trending. Now this is this how you do it helps to prevent safety and quality issues versus react to them. Back to our four value propositions for safety chain management. It helps you keep non-compliant supplies and finished goods from coming in or getting out. It helps you dramatically reduce manual processes and errors. It helps prevent withdrawals, rejections, internal or external recalls. And it helps you turn compliance data into competitive ammunition to make sure that you're working with the best suppliers, the best records, and focusing your efforts in the right place. One non-compliant product leaves the building, there's going to be a negative impact on profit margins and bottom line. It's just a matter of how severe. But one of the key benefits of safety chain management is it helps you find problems at the earliest point possible in your chain. And the more that you can find a problem and take corrective action, the less time and money it's going to cost you to deal with that problem. And so safety chain management is really a proactive versus reactive approach to food safety and quality compliance. And the key here is that there is hard dollar return on investment. 
Easy chain management saves time. It saves money. And it creates efficiencies, therefore really enhance your ability to remain in compliance. There are really four key areas where return on investment, hard dollars savings with safety chain management. This one of these is time and labor. Now studies show that in the food safety and quality business, less than 5% of data actually requires action. However, your FSQA staff can sometimes spend hours, if not days, through hundreds and hundreds of manual test results in every kind of format before you can find the five or ten that really require action. What allows you to do that is focus only on the corrective actions, with, which needs throughput for everything else. They're very time consuming of FSQA, as we all know is audit preparedness. Um, depending on how large a company you are, when you look at your regulatory, non-regulatory, and customer audits, we've spoken to organizations that have one to two audits per month. They're time consuming, and they often have a negative impact on operations. Emerging technologies such as safety chain management, however, can really help make uh, sure that your SOPs are, are being reviewed and verified in time that have documentation of all of your test results and all of your corrective actions. Everything is time and date stamped. It's unalterable. It really allows you to be audit ready on demand every day. The other component is materials and yield. You know, this is, we all know, I've said it earlier, if this is a low margin industry. And as manual processes uh, when it comes to food safety and quality, there's a waste and foliage. To have real-time analysis, you can help keep contaminated products from going into production. You also can get immediate notifications, which results in this need to rework products or use more expensive products. For example, you are preparing a beef patties to send to a customer. You're getting, uh, you're getting uh, ground beef from a supplier, and that's supposed to be 820 in terms of fat content. Uh, you do your own sample checks when it comes in. You find out that it's 75, not 80. Um, you don't have to put more expensive goods in there to get it to the right, uh, to get it to the right um, amount of fat. You can recode it and use it for another product. Um, you don't have to put it into production and then rework it. So there's a lot of materials and yield on when it comes to reporting and analysis, this is a trend if I'm out there at conferences and speaking to people, is not having that one place where you can go and you can see all of your performance. You can do benchmarks. You can see which suppliers are providing the highest quality at the lowest cost. You can understand uh, your high risks are and focus more efforts on those. If you got that beef that was supposed to be 80 20 and it was 75, you might be owed a credit from a supplier. So, having that ability to really trend and benchmark from a single system, which is always up to date with real time data, um, is, is something that will save a lot of time and money. And of course, then there's the risk mitigation. If we look at the slide I showed earlier. The earlier that you can provide problems, the less risk you're going to have and the less expensive it will be. Again, once something leaves the building, there's going to be a cost and there's going to be risk. Um, and that's risk to public health, risk of low customer confidence. It's just a matter of how severe. So the key then really is uh, to prevent those withdrawal objections and recalls. And that is the very big picture of what is food safety management. And what we're going to do now is turn this over to Dave Detweiler. He's going to tell you a little bit about the safety chain solution, and we'll take your questions. Dave, we're turning it over to you now. And I think before Thanks. you look at safety chain food, you're going to tell us about the cloud. Thanks, Barbara. And thanks for kicking it over, and thanks everybody for joining us today. I thought it was important just to start off at a high level. Everybody hears this term cloud computing today, right? It's very popular. Uh, everybody's talking about the cloud. Uh, but the idea is, is outlined here in this picture. And, and when Barbara outlined 
and the component of say, uh, food uh, safety chain management, right? The idea of these different areas and, and this big, complex global environment of, of how you interact with suppliers or how you interact uh, if your organization with multiple plants. How do you pull all that together? And that's not in the cloud, right? So when we talk about the cloud, you might hear other terms like SaaS software as a service, uh, or uh, you might also uh, in conjunction to on-premise software, or software that you actually deploy in-house. And, and you think about some of that software that you may have deployed in-house and, and the differences that you're seeing here on your screen. What the cloud enables us to do from a technology standpoint, simply from a technology standpoint, is number one, it's highly configurable. You think about all of those individuals that need to interact in your supply chain, right? Suppliers, production, manufacturers, retailers, uh, quick service restaurants, whoever it might be. The idea in the component here is that the cloud allows us to be very, very, very configurable in how we interact with this software. Also allows a level of transparency, meaning that you can control what people can and can't see. So it makes it much simpler to utilize. Uh, you know, a, a person, uh, you know, in the field capturing data. Maybe that's their only role, and you can limit those roles down to where you can say, "Hey, this is all you have to do and interact with our system." So we're not going to make it more complex. Uh, the nice thing is, is, you know, there's no hardware, there's no software. If you have internet access. Uh, cellular access, Wi-Fi access, whatever we call it, you, you can access the system and interact with the system. So when you think about uh, utilizing cloud technology in this safety chain management, it becomes very important. If you're on the left side of this diagram, you talk about compliance and real-time notifications. Barbara made a great point when she talked about real-time. Right? How many of you on the call today you know, you, you may struggle a little bit with that. When you talk about manual processes, writing things down, receiving things and filing them away, it's very difficult to get to real time in that fashion. When you have technology that can actually verify components, verify data against your specifications, it allows for that real time enforcement of it. The last piece here in this diagram, uh, you know, is to think about those many individuals in your supply chain. I meant suppliers, but you also might interact with an internal laboratory, an external laboratory. You might have production folks. You might have field, field data folks. If you're a retailer, you might have folks in the store who are actually capturing different checks, monitors. People aren't tied down to their, their desk. They're not sitting in front of computers all day. So how we use, utilize and leverage an easy way to access that data is via the cloud. We can do that in, in you know, smartphones. You can do it on notepads today. You can do it with laptops. Uh, you simply just produce out communication via email or messages. The idea is that we can leverage this cloud technology, allow many people, individuals, companies uh, to actually access it and have rules and rules based access to it that make it very easy to use. So, important from a cloud standpoint, the one line that I would say obviously it's important for some of the big companies I see on the call today that are global in nature. Cloud allows you to connect anywhere in the globe, right? Anyone you're talking to, your your suppliers around the globe, you have production facilities around the globe, you're a retailer, you have stores around the globe. But also, if you're a small company, and I have several of those on our call today as well, and that's where the last bullet comes in handy, especially from a small company organization, where you know you don't want to deploy a big, huge hardware cost or deploy more software, uh, or I would wager a guess that many of us on the call are last or to have you know, an extra IT person to sit around and program technology, and that's where the cloud really takes us. So information about the, the cloud technology, but you know, what I hear a lot when, when I talk with our customers and our, our prospects alike is, well, is cloud secure? Right? Give me an example of where the cloud is taken over. What you're seeing here on your screen, right? Uh, I'm sure many of you today, if you're going to go out and check your bank account, you don't drive down the street to your local uh, banking branch actually uh, you know, ask them for your balance. You probably log online, right? Sure. You're actually checking your financial status, right? Uh, the idea of us all being employees and, and probably going through one of the experiences down there on the left side where you know, today many of us probably even receive pay stubs anymore, right? You log online, you view your pay stub. Or comes up an enrollment, actually go out to a website and enroll in those benefits. 
Think of what the left side of that screen that you're seeing has done to those industries. It's made them more efficient, it's faster, and by the way, it's given us better customer service and customer support because we can actually access that information. So as consumers, we've been stoked about that left side of your screen, right? And that is what's happening with cloud computing and FSQA. Or take the filing cabinets. I've been in many clients with these huge, you know, filing rooms basically, right? Just filing cabinet upon filing cabinet upon filing cabinet. You have to go find something in there, right? And sure, that's the premise of filing, right? You put it in order so you can quickly go back and retrieve it. Think of it at your fingertips. Think if you can go out there online and very quickly, uh, you know, pull up your banking record as I mentioned. You can do the same exact thing for the last check that you did or the last HACCP check that you did or the last interaction you had with your supplier. So just a couple common terms that we've seen you know, in the mainstream today that I would, I would wait to ask most of you have touched right, from a technology standpoint. That's what the cloud computing and the cloud technology is enabling us to do for FSQA today. It's really taking us to that next level, bringing us into a new generation. Right? Talk about the cloud. We'll another example here, and maybe a nice graphic, uh, something to think about. Far proactive versus reactive. You think of the smoke detectors in your house, right? They don't go off all the time. Smoke detectors in your facilities, in your stores, in your plants, they don't go off all the time, but they go off when, when it detects smoke, right? And that's what the cloud technology is enabling us to do. Real-time verification of information. Barbara showed a great graph today about how costs become staggering the longer it goes from, from you actually identifying an issue, right? And the thought that if you can identify that issue within seconds, Within minutes, it's going to help you eliminate those costs associated with it. Oh, by the way, that smoke detector can go off not only for uh, you know uh, results that might be outside of specification, but what about omissions? Sure, you know, the FSQA folks sitting on the phone today uh, are similar to the ones that I speak to on a regular basis, which is, is everything getting done? By the way, I you know I hope it is. It's be nice to have a smoke detector that goes off if something's been omitted, right? Or something hasn't occurred within your facility, in your plant, in your store, right? Uh, out in your field, whatever it might be, and it can run the gamut. The picture there on the right is, is what a lot of us go through without technology in place. Hey, let's figure out what happened. Oh, we better start an investigation, right? Let's go back through the last two and three weeks of, of uh, an information. And number one, hope it's actually captured properly. And number two, hope that I actually find that information. So a little bit of a graphic here just to talk about the proactive nature and where, where technology is actually enabling us to, to go in the SQA world. Right? Uh, if we take this one step further, uh, I'll actually walk you through just a, a couple of brief examples for safety chain for food. So our own organizations uh, completely enable technology and, and how we're doing it here at Safety Chain. Screen uh, a three module kind of diagram, right? It says inbound production and outbound. I don't want to get fooled with the words, right? Because I, may, I see a couple of retailers on here say, hey, I don't produce anything. This looks like a manufacturing project, uh, product. It's not the case. It's a product that uh, sits across all industries, and we're just using some generic terms here on our slide to give you an idea of some areas we can help within organizations. On the left side of your screen there, you'll see inbound. Many of us today struggle with documentation, capturing certificates of assurance, letters of uh, you know, certificates of uh, organic uh, certification or allergen certification or whatever it might be, kosher cert. The idea that we have a document repository for all of those documents. Not only is it a repository, so not only is it a, you know, electronic filing cabinet, if you will, but it also generates out alerts and notifications as things come up on being expired. In addition to that, it will actually facilitate the communication out to the suppliers as we look for that documentation. So many of you on the phone might sit in the FSQA role where you're dealing with suppliers. And you have to go out and find this documentation. Well, think if that communication could be taken off your hands and provided to a supplier where, again, back to the cloud, very simply, they interact with the solution and actually provide that documentation to you. Step further, individuals might be receiving certificates of analysis. What if you actually compare that or verify that information on a certificate of analysis against your specifications without an individual actually looking at each one of those documents? Right now, all of a sudden, you have data rather than a hard copy piece of paper 
sit filing cabinet. With Siri, you can do some of the fun stuff that Barbara mentioned, right? Supplier scorecard. Let's get in compare on, on the test results that we're receiving, the analytes that we're receiving from our suppliers. Take that, that uh, workflow process there to the production element. And like maybe you're not actually producing any, anything, but you probably have a asset program where you can have some QA checks that are actually going on in-house. The idea is that our system, the safe chain system, has uh, you, you know, ability to capture tests. It can come with your internal lab. It can receive data automatically from your refrigeration units, verifying that data is within your you know, minimums and maximums. She notices if, for example, that refrigeration unit starts to go up in temperature before you ever get to a critical control point, right? before you have to issue an NR, or you have to you know, issue a, a, a corrective action. It's to be proactive, not reactive. Right? Let's take the data and do something with it. HACCP programs, task schedulers are built into this program. You have daily checks, daily checks, weekly checks, monthly checks, annual checks, right? The idea is, again, let's make sure that nothing's being omitted. So if a task hasn't occurred, a person out on the floor, a person out in the store needed to go you know, probe a temperature of a product that you just cooked. If there, we can flag, we can generate a notification, a text message, an email to the department head, uh, to whoever it might be, and we walk all the way through the supply chain where we get to the outbound side as well. You have additional customer compliance requirements. You have additional customer specifications. The tension that underlies our solution can be utilized to compare any of those results you have. Internal hold and release programs, outbound production of COAs. The idea is that very quickly, some of these manual processes that you go through, or some of this process where you go through actually aggregate data and try to pull it all together, can automate it, uh, or at least automate it to the extent that you're comfortable. Right? Some folks who are customer we work with today say, "Hey, you know, I still want Dave to go out on the floor and run check. I don't, you know, want a, a Wi-Fi temperature probe to, to pull the data." That's fine too. Right? Well, hey, how about instead of having that taking that pen and paper out to the floor where the data just resides on that piece of paper forever, we capture that electronically on a smartphone or in a, on a notebook like an iPad or, or you know a tough book or a laptop. So the component of safety chain for food is a comprehensive FSQA solution built from the ground up specifically for FSQA. We don't do other areas. We, we're not a sales engine. We're not a database repository for HR information. What we are is a food safety and quality assurance system that was built from the ground up with those ideas in mind. Uh, in mind right? uh, the idea of it being completely stable. Barbara mentioned the ROI. Customers will consistently see ROI within the first 12 months of deployment. That includes implementation. Right? The idea is that your system can be put in place very quickly, and very quickly you can see an ROI. Uh, and, and, and when you, when you put this into place, uh, one of the big key elements from us, uh, from SageChain, is that it's a full service setup. So a lot of what I just talked about is software, feature functionality. Maybe it's overwhelming for folks on the phone to think, well, I'll implement this, right? My IT staff, you already mentioned, Dave, is, is you know, stretched to the limit. What if we offer you a service that says, hey, we'll take your specifications. We'll take supplier information. We'll take your asset program. We'll set up the task scheduler. We'll set up the tests. We'll set up those devices for you and allow you to simply be uh, the K professionals that you are, right? The food safety professionals that you are. You don't need to become a computer programmer to actually deploy the system. And that's something that we offer here at Safety Chain for Food with every one of our customers. It also, going back to that cloud diagram, and needs to be very flexible and, and also produce out continual enhancements and upgrades. Right? The one thing that everybody worries about when they implement software is what if it gets stale? Right? I had opportunity to go out uh, yesterday and, and speak with a customer who you know, was talking about a, a different software solution that within two years it's almost become obsolete. That will never happen with safety software because we're continually enhancing it, continually creating it, and continuing to keep our eyes on the regulations and the customer community helps us with that. Analysts obviously help us with that. But the idea is that our solution is ever evolving and it will never get stale or old. Uh, the, the last piece, we like to use this term here, right? EAT. And this, this outlines the safety chain approach. Uh, so everybody can walk away with a quick, easy term. I think we all like to eat. I know, especially myself. But if you look at a couple of these letters, right? Uh, Barbara mentioned them earlier, too. In full enhanced. 
right, in four food safety programs. Okay, take those great programs which you've developed, and let's help, let's enact, enforce them. Let's make sure that they're actually occurring. Let's provide notification if they don't. Let's provide notification if something's outside of specification, enabling us to enhance that program, right? The enemy, right? The ability to automate, alert, mask. Like, let's get away from some of the paper where we can. If we can really automate it, how great would that be, right? We, we, we receive data from scales and calipers, refrigerant units, receive data from handheld devices. And we say, if something's out of whack, we'll alert you to do it, right? Generate a text message, generate a, 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 an email, and, and action, right? Action. And that ability for our system to provide not only the documentation of the action that you have uh, taken, but we can also provide direction on that action. So wait, here's an alert. Here's what ha happened. Here's what we expect you to do as part of our standard operating procedure. So we can continue to provide that direction while you're acting through the process. And then the last part is transform, right? Let's see. Uh, I can't tell you how many people we talk to that say, hey, we, we capture so much data, but it just sits there, right? What do I do with the data? What have key performance indicator dashboards? See trending against suppliers, production lines, certain uh, areas within your store, right? How it's actually performing. Uh, see that actual information to help ex expedite the throughput. You know, you can hold and release programs, for example, becoming pretty common. Let's make it quicker, right? Let's set a validation request saying, hey, we've got all the data together. We've consolidated it right here. Now, my decision of whether you're going to hold or release a few seconds and minutes, right, quickly. That ability, that final piece of translation, right? Translating this data into something useful. And all this data can be sliced and diced in many different ways. You, have, you know, executives in your organization that might want to see a picture of this. Maybe on a monthly basis, you're putting together a report for them to, to provide how for them to have instant access to that, or a system to automatically generate it out. Um, you can translate this information into something very useful. You can help your business processes become more effective, more efficient. You can understand where the delays are in your food safety and quality program things that might be taking individuals more time. So actually translate this data into something useful. But that's the methodology here at Safety Chain, and, and hopefully it will resonate with, with many of you here on the phone today. Uh, last piece, uh, just a uh, little bit of information from one of our existing uh, Safety Chain uh, clients, and uh, it's Serial Ingredients, and, and they're actually, uh, very proud and known for product innovation. And, and I think one of the things that they've uh, seen from our solution is that ability uh, to for us to be innovative, for solution to be innovative. I'm not sitting and read each of these from John, uh, the director of Q there, but you can see main areas that I've hit on and that Barbara hit on earlier in the presentation. Um, you want to bring that spirit of innovation in. You know, let's get folks out of the the realm of, of pen and paper. You know, how many of your FSQA staff employees do you think you know, have an eBay? account or Google things, right? People are all into today. And they're expecting that from our organizations as well. When they walk into a new process, you know, think about the new people you're bringing into your organization, some of the graduates and so forth. And you say, the way, here's your notepad and a pen. Let's go figure this out. Uh, you know, I, I think you might be getting a look like, really? A pen and a pad? So we, he talks about automation here and the automation of the, the food safety processes and practices while along the way, and trends and benchmarks in a central e access site or suite, right? Everything in one place. The ability to, to utilize that and, and pull it all together. So just information there uh, from an existing client from Safe Chain and, and thought that might be helpful for everybody on the phone to see. Uh, with that, Barbara, I'm gonna hand it back to you. I think we're coming up on our time and we're gonna open this up for some QA. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dave. What I'm going to do now is take your questions. We're out of full screen. So um, you can see on the lower right-hand side uh, on, the, on the smaller rectangular box, just enter your question and hit send. And while we're waiting for those to queue up, let's give uh, some general information because I have been seeing some questions about slides. When you leave the webinar today, There'll be a form that pops up where you'll be able to request pricing, a product demo, uh, an ROI calculator to see what you can achieve in ROI. 
There will also be an email uh, within 24 hours where you make the same request. That email will have a copy of the slides and a recording of today's event that you can download immediately. There's a lot of interesting information on safetychain.com. There's some fabulous white papers um, about the ROI of food safety and safety chain management and compliance. Um, we've got some fabulous events coming up. Uh, we are sponsors of the Food Safety Technology Supply Chain Vulnerabilities Conference. Cup in mid-October in Philadelphia. There's a very generous discount for uh, excuse me, friends of Safety Chain uh, website as well as some great uh, webinars coming up. We're very excited that Dr. David Atchison um, is going to be speaking on the rapidly changing landscape of food safety and quality assurance in October 18th. Uh, for those of you who recognize his name, he was very involved in, uh, in building uh, FISMA. And uh, so we're excited about that. You can register for all that on our website. And with that, let's get to some of the questions um, that we have. We'll leave that up there. Um, just asking you, Dave, how, how are you, or, or how are your customers, our customers, get buyers to adopt the solution? Yeah, great question, right? And I think the conundrum that we all deal with, and, and the fact of the matter is I feel for suppliers today because suppliers are being pulled in so many different directions. So how do we do it? You have to make it easy. And it comes back to that cloud technology, right? The ability for you to mimic an existing supplier's process and they interact with you today is key. If you go back to these suppliers, our suppliers are all being pulled in many different directions, right? Oh, no, my, my supplier or, or my uh, customer is asking me to use this system. My other customer is asking me to use this system. My third customer is asking me to use that system. That's how we operate here at Safety Chain. The idea is let's do existing practice. Many suppliers today are actually emailing documents. How about instead of emailing it to uh, you know, Barbara, ABC Company, how about you email it to ABC Company at safetychain.com? Same process, change in the email address. So let's make it simple, right? Uh, and we also, again, because it is a cloud-based technology, can allow them to have access if they want to. But I would tell you how the majority of our clients are interacting with the suppliers is the initiative of let's make the same exact process. Let's allow them to do what they're doing today and not you know, them to have an extra hurdle to get you information. And that's seen the success from a supplier standpoint specifically because they are being all pulled in different directions. Uh, so let's just make it simple for them. And, and that's what we've seen success in, in getting uh, you know, the additional supply commitment and the suppliers actually utilizing the system because if the system, let's be honest, the system's worthless. So to the initial question, uh, in a long dissertation, I apologize, Barbara, but the idea is let's keep it simple and we can be very flexible as a, as a, as a solution right. to interact with those suppliers. And then, you know, I, I, I think we're also finding, you know, Dave, that suppliers are looking for an easier way too. So it's not, not being forced to implement systems. Um, yep. You know, a lot of times they, they want to go to a portal or use an iPad and enter the information online. It saves them time as well. They just don't want to have to buy all, all these different systems because from all their different customers. Um, so, so I think, um, and and with this solution, they can upload it in other systems, which leads me uh, into Andy's question. And Andy's saying some of the the pieces that you showed us we already have in place, but there's other pieces that would really enhance what we have. Um, is the safety chain solution all or nothing, or can you implement it in in pieces? Uh, going back to the diagram where we showed the different production and outbound modules. Yeah, absolutely. The system is completely modular. We agree with what you just said, Andy, and, and the idea is that organizations may have components of this you know, place today. So let's, let's utilize that. If it's working, we don't want to rip and replace it. The system is completely modular. You can pick and choose the features and the functionality that you want to utilize. The price scales accordingly to what you're going to utilize in the system. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as kind of the grout between the tile. If you have something that's working today, let's use it. If you don't have anything in place, you can utilize safety chain. So the answer question is it's completely module and uh, modular, I should say, and uh, you can kind of pick and choose what you want to utilize. Mm -hmm, great. A question um, from Alan to me. Um, 
refer back to the ROI points, and Alan is asking, do your customers use those ROI points um, to build a business case for new software systems? And the answer to that is absolutely. As a matter of fact, the ROI calculator, which we have, which we can, um, you'll be able to request that, based on customer business cases. And, you know, it, and that's really, you know, how you can get new technology. Um, even though compliance is front of mind for everybody, and it's kind of hard to go in and sell compliance if you haven't had huge major issues. But if you think about the systems that are in place today, a lot of them are supply chain systems, manufacturing systems, and, you know, they're, they're about getting materials from point A to point B. You know, why did companies invest in them? They invested in them because they saved time, they saved money, and they created efficiencies. So by using those ROI points, you you can build a business case that shows that this will save time, save money, and by increasing those efficiencies, you will automatically be more compliant. So, uh, yeah, so we can, you know, we also have fabulous resources here and FSQA expertise to help build those business cases. How are you? Got a question from uh, Maricela, and I hope that I pronounced your name correctly. Um, what happens, uh, Maricela is asking Dave, when in access goes down you know, at the plant, I, I, you know, or, or their production site, um, how is info saved and synced and reestablished? Yeah, good question, right? So we obviously have to uh, take that into consideration, and, and many of the folks that we work with, you know, uh, more often than not, see their internet go down. So there's absolutely local local storage, right? So the idea is that our forms or the things that are being created or uh, developed, if you're using a, a, a phone, for example, or a handheld device, uh, they have the ability to store that data locally until the Wi-Fi or the internet connection comes back up. The the best example that I can use for you is you know, have an existing customer where they're uh, out in the fields, right? And they don't always have cellular connection even or, or Wi-Fi connection. So what we actually have is the ability to, to store that data locally, and as soon as you become connected, the data flows into our solution. Uh, we've also uh, implemented other backup ways to do it uh, with a couple of our clients. It, it seems to be a, a, you know, a fairly large issue. And what we've actually done is uh, implemented the, the, the idea Wow, they just heard that. Yeah, so there it is. Yeah, we, we, we dropped off for the last about 20 seconds, Dave. So we've, we've, uh, the idea is that local storage of data, and the idea is that uh, you know, if, when, when the Wi-Fi comes back up, the data automatically syncs back up. Uh, other different solutions for the ability to do that as well, um, but that's pretty much the most common. So the data is actually stored on the device uh, or you know, on the computer that you're working on, or, uh, you know, where as soon as you get the information back, it syncs the system back together. Mm -hmm. about that um, noise. That's okay. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Mark asking, can you talk about how and where this stuff is hosted and secured so that customer data is protected both from browsers within your SaaS service? Yeah, absolutely. And, and security is obviously key to us. We treat all of this data as if it were social security numbers, number one. Uh, all client data actually sits in separate database instances. We use the hosting facility that's called Microsoft Azure. So uh, everybody's pretty familiar with Microsoft. They have six hosting facilities around the globe. It's actually, uh, you know, no uh, physical access to hardware or items like that. And we're constantly doing pe uh, penetration testing and, and so forth here in place. It's a, a, a very secure solution that we're very proud of, uh, and, and that just kind of touches it at a high level. But uh, the idea is that there are six hosting facilities that are sites around the globe that we can utilize. Uh, we have database instances for each of our clients. And then we have security protocols as data is being transferred back and forth. And that all depends on the, the data transfer protocol that you're going to use, whether it's real time, whether it's you know scheduled, and so forth. But you know, it's something that we can drill in much deeper. And, and uh, I think it was Mark that asked the question. I, I can, we can actually provide some of that technology or uh, you know, technology infrastructure information if you, if you require. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, see, you might want to look in your uh, private chat, Dave. 
Um, but for our, what I'm looking at, I think that we've gotten to all of our questions. So um, I'm going to wrap up, and then if you if you see anything that perhaps I missed, let me know. But again, we'd like to thank you very much for attending with us today. We hope that we've given you some things to think about um, with emerging food safety and quality uh, technologies. Um, they are preventive. They are affordable. They provide, they provide hard dollar ROI, and the, it can help you increase compliance um, and put some time back in your busy days. Um, again, when you leave the webinar, you can, uh, you'll see a pop-up form where you can request pricing a demo or an ROI calculator. You can also request those as well as download slides and recording in an email that you'll get within 24 hours. And we hope to see you at some of our upcoming events. Thank you.